Are you looking to set up your axle bill properly to keep your ride operating flawlessly? In this video, I'll take you along on all the steps I've learned on building axles over the last 20 years to ensure your ride keeps on moving. First thing we need to do is pull that diff cover off and drain all the fluid out. I always like to check backlash before I begin just to see what I'm working with. Before you pull the bearing caps off, make sure to punch a mark on each bearing cap to indicate where it goes. I put one mark on the right hand side and always put two marks on the left. Top of the cap, top of the diff housing. Make sure you leave your bolts in there finger tight. That way you can pop that differential housing out without dropping it on the floor. Now I like to make sure I put my bearing caps in the same location and I try to grab the shims from the side of the differential as I pull it out. As you can see here, I wasn't successful on this attempt, but they were both on their individual sides. Make sure you set these to the side so you can start over with the same ones in the proper spot next time. Now remove that axle seal from both sides of the differential housing while we're in this position before we start to clean things up. All right, now let's hold this pinion in place with a pry bar and a bolt and take off the pinion nut. Air hammer the pinion out of the flange if you don't have a puller. Once we have the pinion out of the way, we can pull that flange off of there. I'm gonna pop off the seal. With the seal out of the way, we can reach in, grab our pinion bearing and our slinger, and then grab the crush lead. Now take your differential ring gear off, take all the bolts off, leave two loose, just a hammer and a punch. We'll tap that loose in no time. We can swap that out to install our new ring gear. Now while we've got this case apart, I like to grab a chisel to knock this bearing loose so I can put my puller behind it. If you do not have a puller like the one I'm going to show here, you can also just continue with a hammer and chisel to knock that off. I prefer to throw the puller in there and just pull it off with the puller because I have it. Now when we install the bearings, we want to make sure that we leave that outer cage free so we do not damage it. If we damage the outer cage, our bearing risks failure. I have the special tools here to set it up, but if you have a nice selection of sockets, you'll probably be fine. So in the theme of using no special tools here, I'm just going to drive that in with a hammer. Now when we flip this over, we do need to make sure that we also have it resting on an appropriate piece to support that on the inside race and protect that cage. Now go ahead, grab your other bearing using the same tool that you used before and drive the bearing home. You can use a press for this if you would like. When I started working at the dealership, we didn't even have a press. We did it all with a hammer and the appropriate adapters. Now that everything's back together, I do want to torque my ring gear bolts. I did seat this all independently and then use red Loctite and my impact. We do need to knock the bearings out of the differential housing, those inner races for the pinion, one in the front, one from the back. Watch out, that one's coming for the camera. Now we're going to press the bearing off of the pinion itself so we can see what size shim was underneath of there. Pinion depth is set with a shim between the gear and that bearing. So you can see, there we have our shim. I will document what size shim that is and actually start my original assembly with that same shim. Here we go, pressing it all back together with that original shim and our new pinion gear as we are changing gear ratios on this axle assembly. We do need to hammer in new races. 
I highly recommend grabbing a race driver set someplace like Amazon or if you got one local that's all fine and dandy as well so new races in on both sides outer pinion bearing is in with that oil slinger and then I'm going to tap home our seal no need to be fancy here just take it nice and slow now as you can see here this is an old nut that I actually ground out the crushed area of it so it is no longer a lock nut for my setup procedure and before you forget make sure you drive in those axle seals both passenger and driver side now gingerly tap in your differential carrier with the wooden handle of your hammer to try and prevent causing any damage from it. Again, that is all set up with the original shims that were there. Now I'm going to check my gear contact pattern after I put a little paint on there. Everything is tightened down at this point, minus having a crush sleeve on the pinion. I wanted to leave the crush sleeve off of the pinion until I have everything set up. So you can tell there by that contact pattern, that we are a little close on the root and a little far out on our toe as well. So what we're gonna have to do with that is increase our pinion. I did add a 10 thousandths pinion shim to the shim that was already there. I'm pressing this back together and we are going to recheck what we have. At this point, it's worth noting when pinion depth is changed, we will also have to move our ring gear or our differential case from one side to the other. So I changed eight thousandths of shim on the case and I ended up with eight thousandths of backlash at this point. But now let's take a quick look at the pattern and you can see here our pattern is looking pretty good but it does need a little bit of love yet. So I did take and change my shim just a little bit so I can get that more on center. And then we are going to crush that crush leaf down. So there is a special tool for holding that pinion, but if you don't have it, you can bolt your pry bar in there. We are looking for a rotating torque of about 25 inch pounds on that pinion bolt. Now I'm gonna go ahead and torque down my case to my axle housing and we will recheck everything again because that's what we do so eight thousandths of backlash there that's beautiful that's generally the target that i shoot for most specs are seven to twelve thousandths with new bearings i like to run everything pretty tight but you can see as we roll this differential case through here now how centered we are on our contact Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you found it educational or even remotely entertaining, please take the time to like and subscribe to the channel. I know this video is missing some things. You'll find them in the Dana 44 rebuild, so check it out.